are at the Budapest International Airport and uh, we're preparing for a very long flight. So uh, we're actually going to uh, DEF CON 2018 in Las Vegas. And the first flight is going to be from uh, Budapest to London. And uh, that's going to be about three hours. And then we're actually going to go from London to Las Vegas for about a freaking 11 hours. So not really looking forward to that. Um, I thought of uh, taking you with me on this trip. So let's see. Look at how packed this place is. So we've just uh, touched down in uh, London in Heathrow Airport and uh, our flight got a little bit delayed but we're still on time for the next flight which is in about I guess uh, one hour. So we're taking off in one hour and I haven't told you about DEF CON. So DEF CON is uh, the largest cyber security conference of the year and they're kind of expecting about I guess more than 30,000 people this year, so uh, I believe it's going to be a blast. But until then, uh, we have about <laughs> 11 hours of flying from London to Las Vegas, so we'll see. And we're here. If you are attending a DEF CON conference, uh, here are some tips or some uh, suggestions that I would uh, give you if you want to remain as uh, safe as possible in terms of your online privacy. So um, I actually don't connect to any of the Wi-Fi over here. I still have my data, uh, data subscription running. And I also have a VPN, so I only connect uh, through the VPN network uh, that I have a subscription on. And I also don't carry any credit cards with me. Uh, my laptop is in airplane mode, so I don't actually turn the Wi-Fi on. If I were to turn the Wi-Fi on and connect to any network, I would make sure that my uh, my VPN is running, so I wouldn't connect to any network here without having the VPN running. So yeah, these are actually just a couple of tricks to kind of remain safe because there there is no actual 100% safety. So yeah. Here are the couple of perks that uh, we received uh, at registration for the DAFCON. So this is a CD, which I haven't looked on it yet. These are some stickers. Um, all right, this is, I guess this is a book with all the events and presentations uh, for this uh, 26th edition of DAFCON. And this is the main piece which is the badge and I'm actually gonna um, like turn it on right now so it has four batteries and I'm actually putting it on so as you can see it started lighting up and now let me see if I can do this with one hand like that the badge it's on. So uh, this is the second day of DEF CON um, and yesterday it was kind of relaxed. We only registered uh, so uh, the registrations were in the morning so we were like for about an hour I guess 45 minutes to an hour in line and then we registered and uh, after the registration um, I attended a talk by Shannon Morris from uh, from Hack5. You should probably know her. Uh, she's a great speaker, uh, and the talk was at the Diana Initiative. And after that, I had a break and later attended a workshop by Sam Bound, which is a professor that I follow and I highly respect and highly esteem. Uh, and the workshop was on Violent Python. Uh, I guess if you're into cybersecurity, 
you know the book. And that was kind of it for uh, yesterday. There weren't too many events. Uh, um, most of the events and a lot of events and uh, speaking gigs and talks and workshops and villages start today. So um, what I'm going to do today is uh, possibly go into some CTF contests. So capture the flag. Uh, and then there are a couple of talks that I'm looking forward to with respect to reverse engineering, which is one of the topics that I'm really interested in. Uh, and uh, most importantly, a talk by uh, Amanda Rousseau, who is a popular figure in reverse engineering. And then, of course, there are the villages. So the two villages that I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, going to, uh, so which I'm prioritizing are the... Uh, the AI village and uh, the biohacking village. So these are the villages that I'm going to go first and then I'm not sure which ones, but I'm probably gonna go to others as well. So I'm not really sure if I'm gonna film there, but if I am, you're gonna see it. So other than the villages, I, I also uh, think of uh, looking or going through the vendors, to the vendors booths to to see what's kind of uh, what's kind of new and uh, who uh, who's who's getting there this year so we're looking forward to that as well and probably the most important aspect of the defcon is that uh, i'm actually looking forward to meeting new people in the field which like i said is so networking is probably one of the most important aspects of this and how much, if I just go with what Amazon or Google or Azure gives me out of the box, how, how well am I covered? And it's really interesting how, you know, there's so many gaps on, on the Google side. And then it's, 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 I always think about like, uh, you know, here's, here's the uh, perfect little cloud thing that already works for you. But is in the books so we are heading for day day three uh, hopefully you can hear me well because of the wind that's out here so uh, I had uh, I participated to a couple of reverse engineering events yesterday as you can see in the videos uh, hopefully I've posted them in this clip and uh, I also went to the open CTF and another CTF a blue team CTF which is actually, if you don't know what a blue team is, it's more on the defensive side, like uh, unlike the red team, which is more on the offensive side. So yeah, and probably the most important thing of yesterday was the networking. So I met a couple of guys last night and also at the events and uh, we kind of exchanged contacts, which I would say is probably, like I said, one of the most important things of, uh, uh, from events like this. Uh, so today um, looks kind of similar to yesterday, uh, still some reverse engineering uh, events. There are two reverse engineering events, hands-on, um, and uh, probably some uh, web penetration testing. Uh, and uh, most importantly, also the open CTF, I guess. Another thing from yesterday was the vendors booth area, which I visited. Uh, but I wouldn't say that that was too interesting. Uh, what what caught my attention most, or where I spent the most time, was at the No Starch Press, which uh, has a lot of good books on uh, on computer security. Yeah, it's annoying. 
and then there is some kind of pairing process where they know, okay, I belong to this guy, whatever, I can monitor this person. And on the monitored side, well, it collects all this sensitive information, like location and so on, and sends it to the back end, and in the back end side, basically. Good. Next stage, another example of this kind, I guess you already get this uh, thing. So there was a uh, application that contained um, additional security uh, protection mechanisms, which um, once you open the application, um, you can enter a pin. And as a user or as an attacker, at first we have to send a login request. For this, you have to send a user email. In our case, as an attacker, we will send the victim's email in the brain and send in local um, levels of current to help with tremor issues um, and prosthetic limbs like you see in the bottom and also cognitive function augmentation so actually making you smarter by using these devices and so one of the ways that I kind of tweak this definition for my own uses is that I'm looking at the actual information itself so rather than it being the device it's the information we're recording there is a relatively safe way to connect to the internet uh, while you're at DEF CON. So on their official website, they have a section where you can register for a username and password. And uh, once you've done that, you can access the DEF CON official access point. Uh, and once you uh, get to that point, you will be required or requested or prompted to put on your um, username and password. And if that uh, works, then you're connected to the internet. Now, I say this is relatively safe, not 100% safe, because, like I've said in other uh, videos, there isn't 100% uh, security or privacy. Uh, with a, uh, I mean, physically with the cable or through the Wi-Fi, then if, if he's able to reach uh, other access points or controllers that are uh, using mint, then he can exploit the vulnerability. And of course, other scenario could be that the attacker remotely compromises uh, one device, and then uh, since he has access to the root cell, then uh, exploit the mint is used to other uh, devices that are connected with. And then, yes, uh, basically uh, attack the mint services that are running in access points and controllers. Controllers are also interesting because they are like kind of Windows domain controller, meaning that uh, uh, controllers can have like uh, hundreds of access points connected. Equipped only with its victim's phone number, we'll be able to attack this printer just through the telephone line and exploit the printer and then take full control of it, right? In this scenario, it can then propagate from the printer through any one of the other interfaces, let's say the internet, to the internal network, right? Effectively creating a bridge between the internal network and the external network using the telephone. That's 1980s again, right? Uh, so we thought that's a really cool concept, and we went on and began the research for that. DEF CON 2018 is in the books, so... Uh great conference amazing conference there were a lot of events a lot of workshops uh, and uh, probably a lot of demo labs and villages probably the most important uh, was the networking part which was also great because I met a lot of people that uh, I'm very likely going to keep in contact so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching